tell us this morning.
welcome you with open minds and open hearts. And Father, we just ask that you be in our presence today, Lord, as we get ready to worship together in your name. Amen. It's not me. Good. All right. Good morning. Welcome to Union Church. We're glad you're just here to worship with us today. Uh, we are just a church that we try and glorify God as best we can, but we know we're not all perfect, and we assume you aren't perfect either. So we're glad you're here. I was reading in Luke chapter 6, and Jesus was asked, you know, why are you eating with sinners and tax collectors? And it kind of made me, kind of made me laugh because, like, tax collectors are just, like, right in there with sinners. Uh, but Jesus' response, that's what kind of got me, is was the idea that, it's not the healthy that need a doctor, but it's the sick. And we, I am a, you know, an individual that needs God's grace. And so I would encourage you guys to just relax, enjoy worship with us this morning. If you did come prepare for offering, uh, we have boxes at the corners um, in each of the doorways, or we have our online giving, as well as we do have our app that we've been kind of telling people about. Uh, it, there's a connection to the online giving there, as well as tons of information. I, this week we put up a lot of stuff on the calendar, on there, so just upcoming events, um, just everything we can think of we put on there, so it's a great place to just get information about Union Church, as well as tonight is a youth group kickoff, so we're going to be meeting here uh, in, the, in the worship center and having a great time tonight, so, um, but that's all the stuff I have to say, so if you pray with me, we'll pray for the offering and just continue with our worship, so uh, God, we just thank you uh, for a time that we can come together and glorify your name. We ask that you be at the center of our attention, our center of our praise this morning, that all things would wash away, but you would be at the, at the core of what we're doing this morning. Uh, we ask that you be with the offering, let it bless your kingdom and grow this church. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. This first song we're going to sing is called Graves in the Gardens, and just kind of piggybacking off what Bobby was saying. We're all sinners. We all have messed up. We are all basically graves. We are all dead until we know Jesus and we become alive. And there is a massive difference between someone who is dead and someone who is alive. If you've ever been to a funeral, even looking at the person, I remember going to my uh, grandmother's funeral, and she was a person just filled with life. And seeing her in that casket, it's like, man, it doesn't even look like the same person. So when we decide to actually jump into the faith of Christ and live for him, we become someone that people might not even recognize anymore because we are now alive in Christ. And so as we sing this song, I just pray that uh, when we get to that bridge and it says you turn graves into gardens, you turn uh, mourning to dancing, beauty from ashes, shame into glory, that we're just reminded that it doesn't matter where we've come from or where we've been. It only matters where we're going. And I pray that you are going with Christ leading the way. Can you please stand with us as we sing and as we praise, as we worship.
How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living Lord. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down
heaven may be fall, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. God, our son knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm going to sing a victory. I'm going to sing a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to sing a victory. I'm going to sing a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. His power. seven days. It doesn't sound like a very good battle strategy, in my opinion, just walking around. And they were even questioning it at times. How are we going to get into this city just by walking, God? And there's probably many of you who are in certain situations today, like how in the world, God, am I ever going to actually win against this addiction? How am I going to finally get out of financial troubles? How am I ever going to mend my relationship? You know, on that seventh day, they shouted out praise and the things that were meant to keep them out. They walked right over and, and they were like ramps into the cities, what some scholars say. So those things that you are feeling is keeping you away from God. He is going to use them someday, but you got to stop being scared. You have got to stop having fear that this is just going to ruin everything. Confess. Confess to God this morning whatever is holding you back to that awesome relationship. Because he will take what the enemy meant for evil. He will use it for good. Amen? I said amen. I pray as we sing this next part, it rings true. And that whatever is holding you back this morning that you go run into the arms of Jesus and say, I don't care what the world thinks anymore. All I care is what you want me to do, and I'm going to do it with my whole heart, my whole soul, and every ounce of my being, every breath in my lungs, I am going to glorify your name. Amen? You take the enemy man for evil, you turn it for good. Turn it for good, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for good. Turn it for good. You take. You take what the enemy.
a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yeah. Heavenly Father. The battle is yours. The battle is won. Praise the Lord. Help us to know those promises, know those truths. If you are for us, nothing can beat us. Help us to lay it all down every single day, God, so that we can truly be your hands and feet, we can minister to the world in your name. We can show you glory and honor. We love you, God. Be with Pastor Rick as he comes up and preaches. Let those words that come out of his mouth be inspired by your spirit. Let those words pierce our hearts, mold our minds to be more and more like you. We love you so much, and we praise your name. And all God's people said, amen. Well, back in the day, there was a song, the lyrics went, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and that's the only thing, that there's just too little love. And I, I don't think too many people are, would disagree with that. I mean, it would be nice if there were no more diseases and accidents and wars and, and disasters, but all those things would be more manageable if there was an abundance of love. And who knows over the, the centuries how many, how many books, how many tales, how many songs, recently how many movies, are all about love, and it's like all of humanity is on this all-out search for something that seems to be right beyond their reach, or, or maybe they got a hold of it, and, and maybe they did, but maybe it was only there for a while, and it, it moved on, and they're trying to attain and to retain this thing called love. I mean, God has made every adequate provision for this world to be a loving place other than forcing us to love one another. That's where he takes a step back and I'm not going to make you do it. I'm not going to put your arm behind your back and you know, put a gun to your head. But outside of that, God has made it very possible for this world to be a loving place. Yet, you know, you look around. If I were to ask you, how many people loved you well this past week? It took your breath away. You had to write it down. You had to tell someone. And maybe it has been a great week where, where you have been well loved, and maybe not just by one person, by a multitude of people, but that's normally the, the exception if it happens at all. So we're in this series, I think you know, and it's this one called Let It Shine, and that's, uh, excuse me, 
Here we go. Let it shine. All in 1 John. And so back in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, there was this word. We, we saw this last week. It is beloved. And it talked about basically meaning that God loves you. I think John's saying, I love you too. Uh, and here we are back in verse 4. And so just three verses later, he, he says, you're the beloved. I love you. God loves you too. Three verses later, uh, you're the beloved again. He starts the same way. And you go, well, why? Why, why the repetition? You think they don't have a very good memory? It, it seems that, that love has to be communicated and reinforced on a constant basis. It's not that you've forgotten that God loves you, but you've pushed it over here because other things in life have crept into play. I mean, how long does it take before you forget the really important things about God? Here, not, not that you discount them, but, but other things have crept in. The, the less important has kicked out the, the most important. So I think he says it again. I mean, some guys say, look, my wife knows I love her. I told her on the day we got married, and if that ever changes, I'll let her know. That's, that's not the way to go about it. I, I think they need to know it, or they need to hear it more often than once every so often. At the baptism of, of Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, God the Father speaks to his son and says this, this is, this is my beloved son. By the way, I'm really pleased with my beloved son. And so he is so in love with his what only begotten son. So here in 1 John he calls us, Beloved, he calls us beloved again, and here not only not only does God love you, I love you too. And, and maybe that's a good reminder when you tell someone that, that you love him. Hey, hey, by the way, I don't want you to forget God loves you. And then I know, I know what. Well, well, good, I good, but keep that at the forefront, not on the back burner of your mind. It 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 also suggests that you know what that you're. You're children of God. I talked about that last week. Or that, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. You say, do you, do you love your family? Somebody goes, nah. Nah, nah. Well, do you love your family? The, the, the answer should be, well, yeah, I love my family. You know, I spend time with my family. And so my sister had a birthday past Friday. She lives in Texas on the phone. My brother wants me to come up to Fort Wayne yesterday. Hey, let's go out. There's a new, got to get this right, Shigs and Pit. I got to think about that, right? <laughs> and we went up. There, yeah, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> and uh, a new one opened up on Illinois Road, not far from where he he lives, and so we enjoy that. He's he, he's my brother, you know. And every now and then, I, I go not as often as I should to, to see my my father uh, down at at the Heritage, and and so uh, these are important things because they're they're my family, but. Uh, as much as I say our biological, our physical family is important, also our, our spiritual family is, is also important. And so you say, well, I, uh, I love my family. Part of it said, well, do you, love your, do you love your spiritual family? Or do you love your church family? 
And the answer should be, well, yeah, I, I love my church family. They're my, my brothers and sisters in Christ. There's a connection there. And, and can I say, the, the spiritual is always more important than the physical or the biological. So, yeah, I, I love my, my church family. And what the world needs now, what the nation, what the church needs now, what, what you and I need now, I go, and it's a want just just uh, or, or what it's a need, it's not just a want, it's not just a desire, is this thing called love. We were created, God created us to both receive but also to, to give love. And, and not just every now and then. It's, you know, without ceasing. So, so beloved, he says, look, See how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called uh, the children of God, and, and such we are. That's what we saw last week. The opposite. Uh, so love, love is not meant to just be kept here. He, he bestowed a love uh, upon us that we should be called his children. That's true, and that has to be uh, forefront of our mind. But... It doesn't stop there. It says this. In, as you can tell, I'm having some. It was working great. Gosh. <laughs> there we go says this, Beloved, let us love one another. So, you're loved, but guess what you're supposed to do with that? It's not supposed to just stay with you, that you, you pass it along. So, God loves us, and that's true, and that's important, but not just so it stays with us. You're loved in order to love. And that's what you're supposed to do with it. I mean, now that you can, do. Ah. Let us love one another, for love is, is from God, and everyone who is born of God knows God. So you can do it. Now the opposite is also true. The one who does not love God, does not know God, for God is love. So the proof that you're in the family of God, the proof you're in Christ, isn't that uh, I have a certain belief system or I'm a member of or I was baptized or I said a prayer uh, one time a long time ago. And it's that are you, are you currently loving? Uh, because if you don't, it says you don't know God. You're not a child of God. Now, the issue could be then, what is love? Because we have this thing, yeah, we talk about it a lot, we sing about it a lot, we write about it a lot, but, but when you tell someone, you know, that I love you, what, what are you saying? Is love primarily a feeling? And, and I think we know, no, not primarily. Is it primarily an emotion? No. I, I think sometimes there's an emotion there. I mean, those of y'all that are, that are married, remember the first time you told the person you're married to that you loved him or her? Probably. Was there any type of emotion attached or was it sort of like matter of fact? Yeah, the sun's shining, the, the cubs won, oh, I love you. You said you loved you. They, oh, I love you too. And you guys kissed. You know, it was, all, it was all beautiful. So there's a time, there's an emotion attached with love, but, but that's not primarily what, what love's about. So, well, love, it, it's a commitment. Well, yeah, it, it, it's a commitment, but it's, it's not just a commitment. It's, it's more than that. I, I always get worked up at weddings, and I'm, I'm going to be doing one here 
oh, in about another month. And so we start talking about, okay, how you want this wedding to go, and do you want me to just come up with traditional vows? You want to write your own vows, but you know what's in those vows, don't you? There, we say incredible things. We make this promise, and one of those promises is for better, for worse. I mean, I'm going to love you for better or for worse. If it goes this way or that way, it doesn't matter because I'm still going to love you. And we say that, and I think we mean it, although we don't really know what we're saying. See, it's easy. We love to love when it gets better. That's when love's easy. When your wife comes up and says, hey, anything I can do for you, anything you want, you know, can I rub your feet? You know, when she comes up like that, we're going, oh, this is that for better stuff. I like this. But what happens when it gets worse? When you say, honey, can I have a sandwich? Make your own. Can I rub your feet? Can you rub my feet? Rub your own feet. You know, get the dog to lick them or whatever it, it might be. I'm not doing that. Not anymore. Well, what happened? I don't know, but it's not happening anymore. So you're on your own when it comes to your feet. You go, huh. That, that, that took a turn in the wrong direction. Now, how, how likely or how easy is it to love now? Or you say, for richer, for poorer. And you mean it at the time. And the richer part's really great. Money came in, got a great job, got a raise. How about the poorer stuff? Lost a job, took a demotion, went and bought a boat, didn't have the money, went and bought a gun, didn't have the money. That's guy stuff, mainly, you know. <laughs> mainly. Women went and bought curtains. <laughs> what what the? <laughs> You know. It's like, yeah. You don't need no curtains. We needed a gun. Uh, but you go, oh, you know, those, those kinds of things. So for, for better, for worse, for rich, for poor. And then, and then he had this other thought. It's until, until death do us part. And you think about it and you go, man, oh, man, that is some kind of commitment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Sure is. But that's, that's what we're saying love's about. Basically say, I'm going to love you no matter what. But how, what if she goes crazy on me? He goes crazy on me. Doesn't have that exception clause unless you want to write him in. Yeah, richer for poor, better for worse. Except, I mean, if you want to put that list in there, that she goes crazy, you know, gains 50 pounds, whatever it, it might be, then, then, then it's out. A ain't happening. You know, forget it. You know, I didn't sign up for this. But if you did that, he or she, they wouldn't marry you. So we're not looking for this. We're looking for doesn't matter what. And is, is God calling on us? You know, and, and it's not a marriage, right? But is God calling us? To love one another in, in similar fashion? If, if we uh, agree, don't, dis, don't, don't agree. If we see things different. If, if, if we clash. So my wife and I, we've been married quite a long time now. And, and guess what? We still have clashes, just telling you. What do you do? I don't know. I'm just glad when it's over. I, I, I just want to go hide somewhere. don't know about you guys. I'm looking for a woods to go to. 
<laughs> that you don't foul at me. But you, you work it out, right? You work, you work things out, and you know, we're still together. And in the church, I think, and I know that's, that's the way it's supposed to be, you, you work things out. You don't just go running off somewhere. Uh, so, God's calling us to love, I go, in, in similar fashion as He has loved us. So, gosh, we thought we had this fixed, you know? It's Trevor Jones's fault. <laughs> Wherever he's at. Is he hiding? All right. Time out. Get your tail up here, would you? <laughs> he. Yeah. <laughs> How's that resume of yours? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> now, here's the love, of, the love of God. It was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. So, th this is God's love. And, and so, the way God loves it, it wasn't just, oh, I feel really warm about you. And it's not just he is committed to us. And it, it, it wasn't those things, but love is an action. So he did something. And, and what he did, he sent his one and only, as what begotten means, his, his one and only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. So God loved the world, so basically God sacrificed. That, that's what he did. Uh, it's, it's not a feeling. See, part of it we think about love and and. And the first thing that comes to our mind, oh, love, we think about sex. You know, there can be sex without love. Now, some of you older people go, you certain kind of get nervous when I talk about sex in church. You can look down, look up, look at your watch, pretend like you're sleeping. Uh, because old people get nervous when you talk about sex in church. But to me, like, that's where you should talk about it, right? Really. It's that or the back of the, of, the, of the school bus in sixth grade, and Johnny's got it wrong. So we might as well. Do. Here, okay. So it's not, it's not just about, about sex. It's not primarily about sex. And, and some of the guys go, huh? I mean, they never heard this before, right? And I love it, yeah. And what is it? And well, then you need to know, right? You know, sometimes it can be, but it's, it's not always that. And, and so it, it's more than that. It's, it's, it's commitment sometimes, but sometimes it's more than that. When you think about love, think about sacrifice. When you tell someone, I love you, what are you saying? Is that I will sacrifice for you. And that, that makes it so different. I love you. Okay, okay and I, so I, I'm not going to say it, but I know what I mean. Meaning, I'm going to sacrifice for you. I'll lay it on the line for you. I may set aside what I want or what I think I need for you. Or I'm willing to hurt, I'm willing to do without for you. That's what it means when you say, I love you. And if you put love with sacrifice, we may not say it so much, knowing what it means. But it means, yeah, I am going to sacrifice for you. Yeah, all right, good. Uh, I'll put it this way. Love that is spoken but not expressed is love that's absent. So it's one thing to say it, but people are always looking to, having said that, show me. I love to hear it, but show me. 
So don't just say it, show me. Because if you say it but don't show me, I don't think that you really do. So show me. Exactly. Here. In this is love, not that we love God, but he loved us. Why? God went first. God says, you can't love. You're unable to love until I first love you. You don't know how. You don't have the capability. But, but now that I went first, now that I love you, now you can. But having done that, he expects us to reciprocate. God loved you, so he expects us to love him, and where is it? And love others as well, because now we can. So does God love me? Does God love you? Are you, are you beloved? Are you as children of God? The answer is yes. Now, don't let it stop there. Do something with it. Love him in return with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And now, love other people as you love yourself. That's what we're told to do. See, this is what he did. He said he, he, he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. I mean, an atoning sacrifice. So I love you guys, says the Father, so I'm going to send my only son. I don't have any others. The only one to, to die a, a nasty, torturous death for you. And the son goes, I guess I, I'm in. I, uh -huh. You're the one that's going to have to go down there. And they're going to they're gonna accuse you. They're going to spit. They're going to gonna beat you up. They're going to torture you. And then they're going to kill you because they hate you. All right. Uh, so sacrifice, that's love. Here, it can be a feeling, it can be an intention, it can be these things. But it's so much more than that. Love is sacrifice. So God said love the world, he decided he chose to sacrifice his only son whom he loved. Both of them knew that him coming to earth was a death sentence. But he did it. And you go, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Yeah, I am. And it's not just so we can get to heaven someday. It's not just that. It's so... So we can love both God and others every day. So it's, it's a sacrifice, what the Bible calls being a living sacrifice for God and others every day. So uh, a lot of you know that my wife and I, we attended uh, and we met at Columbia Bible College in Columbia, South Carolina. And mainly when we were there, there was a, a president of the Bible College. His name was Robertson McQuilkin. And he's not, it's not a famous name, but few of you may have heard of him. Well, him and his wife had met at the Bible College. His, his father at one point had started the Bible College. I need to put my glasses on to, to read this. Uh, Robertson and Muriel met at what they call a CBC. They married in 1948, and for the next three decades, they raised six children and served as missionaries uh, to Japan for 12 years. And he, be, he became the president in, in 1968. And the first sign their lives were about to change appeared in 1978 when driving to Florida with friends Muriel, his wife, told a story and laughed. And a few minutes later, she told the very same story. Roberts had replied, honey, you just told us that. You ever witnessed anything like that before in your life? Now, 
number of years ago, I visited my parents, and they had this little dog. Dad had it on his lap, said, yep, he's, he's a really good dog. Okay. 20 seconds later, yep, he's a really good dog. About 20 seconds later, yeah, he's a real good dog. That's when I figure, oh my, something's going on. So the same problem occurred again with increasing frequency with Muriel. She would speak at a, at a public function and lose her train of thought. A few years later, Robertson had a doctor tell them, you may need to think about the possibility of Alzheimer's. As the next few years went by, Robertson watched helplessly as his fun, creative, loving partner slowly faded away. She found it more difficult to express herself. She stopped speaking in complete sentences, relying on phrases or words. There was one phrase she said, though, how often, and it was, I love you. When he was away from her, she, she would become distressed and would often walk the half mile to his office just to find him. There, there, his office was on, on the campus down this little road. Robertson concluded that, that she needs me now full time, so he resigned from being the president of the Bible College. He says, the decision was made in a way 42 years ago when I promised to care for Muriel in sickness and in health till death do us part. He stated, I don't have to care for her. I get to. It is a high honor to care for so wonderful a person. An oncologist told him, Almost all women stand by their men. Very few men stand by their women. In 95, he was talking to her on Valentine's Day, recounting a story. And she, she woke up. And she said, she smiled, and the first word she said in months was, love, love, love. And Robertson comes over and says, you do love me, don't you? And she said, I'm nice, which meant to her then, yes. Those are the last words she said until eight years later when she died in the year 2003. I mean, how many, how many women are looking for a guy that will stand by them and care for them when it gets worse. And they can no longer take care of themselves. And I would think, regardless of what he looks like or the income or his intelligence or leadership or anything, I think everyone would say, count me in for that kind of a guy. I hope it got me one of those kind of guys. or women for her husband. That's the kind of love, it's, it's, it's sacrifice. When they, when they can no longer do for you that you do all you can to take care of them. Love is sacrifice. Here we go. So we can love both God and others every day. Here's the final verse. Repeat. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And everyone who is born of who loves is born of God and knows God. And what this world needs now is this thing called love. And the beloved 
are the ones that are to leave this world or lead this world in this thing called love. May we learn what love is. I'm just praying, may, Lord, may we learn uh, to be sacrificial. I don't have to have what I want. I don't have to get my way. God, relationships get tough. Sometimes they get ugly. Sometimes they become uh, seemingly unbearable. Lord, let us love. May the vows we took, the words we said, become a reality as years go by. Lord, thank you so much for loving us, showing us the way, making it possible. It's our intent to love you in return and also love one another. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Please stand with us as we in the service. And we're just going to actually sing. We don't have words up for it or anything like that, and it's okay. Um, but we're going to sing, My Jesus, I Love Thee, just as a declaration of that we are going to proclaim our love not only for each other, but for Him as we leave this place. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. Heavenly Father, God, you, you deserve all of our love, no matter how much it cost us. And Lord, I pray that we are living a life that shows that every single day. We love you so much. Let our actions, our words, our thoughts constantly show that. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Have a wonderful week. Go show Christ's love to everyone.